Good afternoon and a blessed Thursday to all. This is Father Marshall Shelley. I'm coming to you with the weekly Rector's vlog and update of what's happening here at the life in the life of Christ at St. Peter's in Spotswood. There are a lot of things going on here. We have tree work going on. We're removing old locust trees that have been with us for over 75 years here on the property. Time to say goodbye to them. We've been planting new trees for the past couple of years trying to enact a 100-year arboretum plan that'll be here long after all of us have departed for a life in Christ uh, beyond this mortal coil. Uh, we have uh, put in some beautiful ornamental cherries, some uh, chestnuts, some beeches, some yellow woods, uh, a yellow rain tree as well. We've uh, trimmed and, and conserved our magnolias, which are beautiful, um, and look forward to seeing them again uh, in the spring, bring forth their flower and their scent. And really, we're excited about the work we're doing. We're also saying goodbye to some gentle old giants. We have a maple tree that is overshadowed the lawn cross and our outside worship space for many, many years now, and it has just reached the end of its time, and we're going to be saying goodbye to that. We're also going to be saying goodbye to an oak tree that stands behind the church that has been uh, a literal uh, guard against erosion and a protection against people winding up in the creek as they make the transit behind the church in the dark of the night. Uh, we're going to keep the trunk of the tree, but we're going to say goodbye to the branches, and uh, hopefully the root ball will be able to preserve the bank for some years to come. So there's a lot going on in terms of the grounds themselves. What's happening inside the buildings is equally exciting. We have our thrift shop that continues to be an amazing ministry here at St. Peter's. And we also had a record night at our feeding ministry for the community supper. And Community of Hope Ministries continues to oversee our feeding ministries with the Alice's Cup Food Pantry. Uh, even as the garden goes to sleep for the growing season, I can't believe it's this late, it's almost December, and we still have things growing in the garden. Um, we're saying goodbye to the last few crops of Brussels sprouts and turnips and uh, those will be going to the pantry this week. So there's a lot going on here. We as well had another session. Uh, we're closing out our series of the big questions for our older children and younger youth in the parish. These, uh, these virtual Sunday school gatherings are up on our YouTube channel, so please do check those out. Very happy and very proud of our volunteers in our, uh, in our Sunday school as they continue to support our families, uh, first with our first efforts in October uh, with the younger crew and then now with the older. And we look forward to some, some new things happening in, uh, in the year to come in 2021 as we uh, support this virtual formation of discipleship. One of the things that we're looking forward to is we're trying to put together our virtual Jesse tree. You'll be hearing more about that in the next week or so. And uh, please do pray for your formation ministry as we seek to make that happen. And then finally, I wanted to give thanks to our vestry. We have opened the nominations process and we're looking for uh, someone who might be able to serve for a term as warden. That's a two-year term. And then also we have vestry member and delegates to convention, convocation, and also the Stone Scholarship Committee to uh, establish as nominees for our annual meeting in January, which is just around the corner. So that again, there's a lot going on in the life of Christ here at St. Peter's. I wanted to bring up to date as well on our worship plans. We were hoping to have uh, an in-house, inside Advent series of worship uh, Sundays, but it doesn't look like that's gonna be able to happen with a surge that's going on right now with an increase in infection and in infections for COVID-19. So as a result, uh, the wardens and I are resolved to continue to support outside worship for as long as we possibly can. That will be at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings in Advent. We've uh, made dispensations to try to make sure we have some outside heat and uh, warmth available as well as trying to design our worship space with intention toward Advent in that case. We hope as well that when we are required by weather to move inside, you'll be able my, my wife, Laura, and I will be able to welcome you to our dining table. Um, we did that at the beginning of the shutdown, and uh, we're willing to do that again so that we can preserve that sense of worship and the intimacy of worship that we enjoy here at St. Peter's to be able to welcome you virtually into our home when we can't gather outside. So I wanted to get to my word for the week, and uh, I'm glad I got here a little early. Uh, the word for the week is Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving is not just a holiday for us as followers of Christ, as people who seek to give testimony and 
to give praise to a living God. Thanksgiving is literally the bread and the butter of our lives, particularly the bread. Uh, we call our worship Eucharist, which is the Greek word thanksgiving. The communion service itself is referred to as the great thanksgiving. And in this time when we as Americans look towards the Thanksgiving holiday as a time to gather with family and friends, uh, which we're not really able to do this year safely, and also as we seek to figure out ways to give thanks after a very complicated and intense year and season in our lives, I think that word is important to focus on. I give thanks every day for this amazing parish that I'm honored to serve. I give thanks for the family and friends that continue to support me in this ministry and in this life and to guide me in wisdom and grace. And I give thanks for the wider communities that I'm a part of that continue to feed and nurture everything I'm able to do to serve others in the name of my risen Lord. But I urge you to figure out ways to express the novelty of Thanksgiving this year because we are divested of our ability to maintain our easy routines in the midst of this pandemic, this is exactly the time in which we need to break new ground in giving thanks and finding gratitude in our, in our lives and in our hearts, and also in the ways we express thanksgiving. Because if we're just feeling something, really, it, it's just a feeling. It isn't, uh, it isn't uh, a witness until we are willing to actually give it flesh, give it action, give it intention, and give it relationship. We see Thanksgiving all around us all the time. I had the opportunity to experience that. I often refer to experiences I have uh, from the day before at the community supper, and uh, I had that opportunity to give thanks with several people as they drove up in their cars to get our early Thanksgiving meal that we offered to them, and then to take even some of those meals home to others who may be hungry, who are neighbors, who are friends, who are family members who can't come. So there's an opportunity for extending that sense of Thanksgiving. But I'm also giving thanks today because I get to visit a couple of shut-ins who have not been able to receive guests for a long time. I'll be masked and gloved. We'll be very careful in the way we approach each other and sit with each other. But I'm just grateful for the opportunity to connect with someone that I haven't seen since the shutdown began and with someone who I've only been able to see uh, every once in a while since this began. So, you know, even though we are limited in the time we can spend with each other, we are limited by the distance we must, we must maintain in order to keep everyone safe, we can still connect and talk to each other and be in relationship with each other, even if it's virtually. I give thanks for the opportunity I have for the technology and, and, uh, and the opportunity to be able to share these words with you. This is another way of giving thanks. So please, in all ways, figure out some opportunities you have, not only to give thanks, but to share it, to express it, and to make it a testimony of the coming days and weeks as we move through this holiday season in some novel and challenging ways. We are together in this, even if we must be apart for a time. And I give thanks for you who is watching this now. May your day be blessed, and may you be full of the grace of, and love of God in Christ that we have the opportunity to share. Someone needs to hear from you today, so please reach out to them and let them know that you give thanks for them and their life, even as they have made an impact on yours. God bless you. Take care. We'll see you next week. And may your Thanksgiving holiday be one of refreshment and rest. Amen. Take care. Bye-bye.